Hello everyone, Yossi Kaplan here, your friendly Toronto realtor in now Costa Rica. And today I'm with Greg. Greg is a ex, hello, <laughs> ex neighbor from just down the street. And Greg made the move to Costa Rica. So I wanted to ask Greg a little bit about his experience as a Canadian, Ontario, and Torontonian to move and his trials and tribulations. Hello, Greg. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hello. Hey, it's good to hear from you. Hey. Okay, first question. How's the weather? <laughs> it's hot, but it's great. You know, it's it's hot, but it's windy. And because it's windy, it's actually, I love it. Uh, I love it when it's windy this time of year. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, when it's not windy, it's really hot and it's kind of unbearable. But right now it's windy, so I love it. It's great. Mm -hmm. And it's dry. So it's going to be slightly dangerous when people start burning their garbage and things. Like, right. uh, you'll see smoke and you might see some forest fires and things. So gotta be careful. And Costa Rica yeah. has a dry season and wet season, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, dry having? season starts. Uh, we're on. This is uh, what's the date today? Today it's February nineteenth or something. Uh, February twenty one. I don't know what it is. Twenty first. Um, so sorry, uh, I turn that phone off. Apologies. Oh. Okay. So yeah, uh, we got two seasons. We don't have summer and winter. There's dry and wet, and uh, we're currently in the dry season, February twentieth, and uh, it'll. Bad. Yeah, I was just saying it'll be dry until probably July, I think, maybe. Right. It probably won't rain at all until July, at least where I am. I'm in the West Coast by Tamarindo area, along about, about one mile from the ocean. So I'm right, like so uh, 90 meters above sea level. I'm going to share. Uh, I have a map here. Let me share it. Let's see. Okay. So... Greg, tell me a bit about uh, about Guanacaste and the area, and then I want to ask you like how you got there and all that. Well, the history I can't. I'm really not a history buff. I can't tell you much about it, but I think Guanacaste used to be part of Nicaragua, uh -huh. and it was a, it was appended to Costa Rica x number of years ago. I don't really. Uh, I I have no idea when, but um, Guanacaste has a reputation of being kind of bad for cars <laughs> the roads are not the best here the roads are the better uh the roads are fairly dirt uh, you're looking at highway 160 right now on the map that uh -huh. road is it used to be 100 percent dirt all the way from santa cruz no um there's a town called rio seco actually all the way down to like, almost musara and nicoya and all that now they're paving it they're slowly they're slowly paving it and it's turning out really good so uh, but yeah, it's a uh, Guanacaste is pretty good. Um, it's a lot of tourist areas here. We're not far. We got the we have the Liberia Airport. Uh -huh. so that's good. It's uh, really cool. there seems like I think there's only two international airports. There might be a new one opening up in Limon on the west, on the other coast, on the Gulf Coast. What, sure. what made you choose uh, Playa Lagarto? Maybe I should say Playa Lagarto is a larger development, a few hundred acres. And yeah. people can buy a larger lot or a smaller lot and build their own homes on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, give me a couple of minutes. I'll explain why. Okay. So uh, I, I knew I wanted to live in this part of the world. Okay. This part of the central world. I, knew, I didn't know uh, my geography was not great at the time, but I, 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 got, I went to flight center and I booked a, a stop in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and then took a bus to Mexico City and then saw Cancun and Cozumel and Belize and Panama and Quito, Ecuador. And during all that three week trip, I, I explored really. And uh, I met a real estate agent from Canada who said, oh, you got to check out Costa Rica. It's got the best uh -huh. infrastructure and all that stuff. And, and uh, she was, yeah, like she wasn't even in Costa Rica at the time, but right. she said, yeah, you got to check it out. And um, when I got back home uh, to Toronto, I started posting on Facebook stuff, um, pictures of my trip. And, and uh, Facebook's search algorithm is really good because it starts looking at my posts and saying, "Oh, this guy went to this guy went to all these countries. Let's start sending, let's start bombarding him with ads about, about <laughs> real estate and stuff." So Not I get this ad. <laughs> I know, I know. I get this ad from Recap in Toronto, and they, they have this development in Costa Rica, and there, it turns out their office was just like five blocks or six blocks or two subway stops or whatever away from where I was working. So I stopped by and I took a look and they, they're 
they didn't really have a pushy sales team, but they showed me their, their, their stuff. And they said, if I go down and I buy something, they will reimburse me for my travel costs and they'll take Canadian money instead of American money at the same at par, right? So I thought, oh, right, that's, that sounds like a free trip. So I think I'll do that. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> I did. I, I, I went down not intending to buy anything, but, but I, you know, I, I kind of got tired of looking, so I ended up buying something. Uh, I ended up buying an, an acre and a half. And, uh, it's not the best acre and a half they had, but it's, it's got an ocean view, and it's, uh, it's got a flat spot to build a house on it, and uh, it's surrounded by other Canadians that speak English, and the roads were not too bad, and it was not too far from the airport. And I didn't really... You know, I didn't really do a whole lot of research, but I basically just got tired of looking and I, I plopped down something. I always figured, you know, I'll probably sell it if I don't like it. So, so I spent about six or seven or nine months paying for what I bought. And then I flew down again to look for a builder to build something. And I found a guy. I don't even remember how I found him, but, um, <laughs> but I found a guy who, he grew up in Costa Rica moved to New Jersey when he was younger, learned how to build houses for 20 years in New Jersey, came back to Costa Rica and started a company making houses to American standards, you know, right. to American quality, to uh, what we would expect. Like yeah. not Tico, not local houses, but quote, normal okay. houses. That, yeah. No, yeah, normal houses, normal looking houses. And uh, I picked him somehow. He, and I didn't, even, I didn't even do, I didn't even check his references. But he speak he spoke English and he took me to lunch and we, I took him to the property I bought and he found my water source and he he seemed like a personable guy and he seemed and one thing he really liked was he seemed excited about what I wanted to build because I had plans for uh, something unique and he wanted to do something unique and different so so uh, signed a contract and um, and uh, it was like forty points I think and uh, I think I had to pay him forty percent down for him to buy the materials. And then another 30 or 25 percent when he got to a certain milestone like when all the walls were up and the place was slightly enclosed and then i had to do i think 15 percent to kind of finish it and then another 10 percent after i did my inspection of the place right. so getting money to the to him was hard at that point but i well, it was a wire transfer um i had but i had to spend a whole bunch i had to send a whole bunch of uh documents that, where I got the money from and all that right. nonsense. And he had a hard time getting it. The bank was holding it. So I, it only arrived at the bank in two days, but he didn't get the money for about two months because he had to prove that it's, uh, it's legitimate. There's a lot of banking rules here. Uh, Greg, uh, thank you. Um, who does the, now you have a beautiful uh, Japanese style home mm -hmm. in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Who, who um, designed it for you? Was it your idea or somebody else? Yeah, I bought the plans in, in the year 2000 uh, from a place called haikuhouses.com. And uh, I did a whole bunch of research for, what do you call it, prefabbed houses. I looked at uh, round houses from a company in North Carolina, Top Cider, and another company somewhere in North Carolina. They make kind of cool houses. But I settled on this one called Haiku Houses. They build all the parts for you. They ship them, they put them on a truck, they number everything, and they ship them to your destination, just put them, assemble it. And I didn't want to do that here, so all I wanted was the plans. There's no way I'm shipping a bunch of lumber from America to here. It's going to rot and, and cost a lot, you have to pay taxes. So uh, I just bought the plans and we used local materials and local labor here. Beautiful. And so we built the house using concrete and steel with wow. a wood facade. So we've got teak uh, wood on the outside and Guanacaste wood uh, for the roof. And the rest is mostly uh, concrete and steel with Very some good. Tyvek or fiberglass ceilings and uh, laminated wood for some, some floors that I bought. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. How, how did you find the process of uh, zoning and permitting? <clears throat> oh, yeah, that was... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got, that was kind of out of my out of my control for a while. I mostly left that to the builder and uh, he was really frightened. He had to go to the municipality seven right. times to, right. to get all that stuff. They kept asking him for papers and he would supply them and then he would ask him for the same thing again or something would expire. Or just oh, what a horrible nightmare that I got shielded from. So I didn't really have to do that. But um, 
uh, he said the first thing is you have to have water supply to, you know, for mixing concrete and all that. So the water is number one important. Uh, got to make sure that the uh, I don't remember everything, but water and rights and make sure it's buildable and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, you have to have road access. You need road access, okay? Make sure you're not landlocked. And I was not. Maybe maybe I'll just say for the viewers that Playa Lagarto is a, is, is a community and a development, so they build the roads, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's power to the property. And you use your own well or do you use a well from the community? Community well. There's about, I think there's two wells, that de, de, but, and they, they pump it up into water tanks, and then the, the water tanks are gravity fed to all the houses around here. Do so. all the lots right now, all, some of the lots have road access, power, and water available? I think they all do now. Um, when I started, I, I, I didn't have any power. We had to use solar panels or generators, it was horrible. So my Poor builder, he spent a lot of money on gasoline for the generator and all that. Stuff. And uh, we, we eventually got power poles installed. And then about two months later, wires got installed on it. And then two months later after that, the wires got hooked up. And then two months after that, we were supposed to get the connection from the wires to the house. But we bribed the guy $200 to do it when he was in the area. So he did it. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Very and then we got lights installed on some of the some of the poles. So, uh, but now there's there's poles almost well in in this Playa del Garda thing. Uh, uh, Section G does not have power yet or water. They only have roads. Because so, that's the newest one. Yeah, there's A B C. It goes up goes A B C up to G. Uh, a is was done first years ago. I'm in C. Uh, C is completely. Uh, there's still some lots for sale in C. D is a smaller one. It's, uh, D, I think, has, yeah, D, I think, E and, the D definitely has power and water. E, I'm not sure about. F, I'm not sure about. The G just only has roads. G is the big one. A Playa Lagarto, yeah. where you live, it's got the, the large homes, like you built on a large lot, and there's a smaller lot, mm -hmm. and there's this community lot. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you could um, tell people a bit about the differences uh, of those, yeah. and I'll try to find some pictures. Yeah, yeah. When they first started, they, they had these little villas. They're called villas. They're, yeah. um, they're like Tico-sized houses. These were one or, one or two bedrooms. They're kind of clustered together. They're, uh, they're clustered around two pools. There's a restaurant there, too. Security guard has a gate that, or, or a fence or a chain to, to uh, the security there. So that's the villas. They're, they're okay. You know, they're not, they're not, they're not bad. Then there's section A, which is I think every lot is about one and a half acres. They're all These different are the shapes. Villas, right? Uh, uh, hold on. Let me, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Let me show it. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a villa. Yeah, that's a villa, villa in one of the pools. Right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And um, are these villas managed by the company or people buy them? How does it work? You know. They're both. Yeah, They're both? some are. Um, I don't know the percentage, but some are all privately owned and some are managed by the and hold the community. And each of these clusters will have a pool, right? Yeah, they share that pool. There's two okay. pools. Right. You're looking at one. That, that one that you're you're showing is it's really one pool, but it looks like it's two. It's, yeah. it's got a waterfall in it. There's a, right. 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 There's another one that's a little bigger. Let me see if I can find some others. I believe that that will be the restaurant here. Yep, that's a restaurant. It's pretty you're, good. You read there? Oh, what? Sorry. Do you like the restaurant? Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, they had a change of management recently. They used to have a guy named Wally running it. Now they have uh, a local person running it. And, and, and this so is uh, done by the beach, right? It, I've been there, but it was a while ago, and it was a little surf shack and a huh? restaurant down down by the beach, right? That oh, that's uh, Marbella. That's the Marbella? Tiki Hut. That's the Tiki Hut in Marbella. It's right. a pretty good restaurant. It's actually pretty good. They get great hamburgs and fries, and it's about seven kilometers south of here. The um, the beach uh, below Lagarto, Lagarto sits on the hill. How yeah. do you, how do you um, for people who don't know how do you access it? How do you get? There's there? a one there's roughly a one mile road. It's a dirt road, straight. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, 
There might be, a, a, there's, I think there's plans of a second road being built. So from the G lots, like a shortcut. Right. Um, is there any transportation to, to the beach? Like if someone is older or can't walk? Mm. No, not really. Just no, not car. really. Yeah, you need a, you don't need a four by four, but it, it's kind of highly recommended. Because right. uh, if you, if, if you're at lots, if you're in um, section C, D or E, you have to go through two creeks. Right. small creeks yeah. water's roughly this deep sometimes yeah and it's about maybe i don't know this wide i guess so you gotta go through some water but it's not that bad it's difficult it happened to me one of my trips costa rica that I went down by the gps i hit the water like you gotta go back <laughs> yeah really yeah yeah, yeah. one time i used to have a geo okay i had a geo tracker and then, and then i had a jeep now i have a suzuki jimny which is great i love the suzuki jimny let me show you Okay, I'll show you. Um, I'll, I'll max your window so we can see it. Yeah, look. Hold on. There. It's my little Suzuki. I park it indoors. There's my little Suzuki Jimny. It's a four by four. Right. Uh, yeah. That's Beautiful. it. That thing's great. It's not I fast. It goes anywhere. It's not fast. Yeah, it's not very fast and it's not super powerful, but it works. And That's it, all you need. It was, it was thirty thousand dollars US, mm -hmm. and uh, they have a four door version coming out for three, for an extra five thousand. And uh, yeah, so um, when I had my geo tracker, I went through one of the creeks, and the water was so deep that the w water actually went over the hood. <laughs> so, but I did; it didn't stall, so I was lucky it didn't. I made it through the week. But for now, the creeks are so yeah, some of them are dry. So Good enough. No big deal. What what kind of development and houses do you see people building? Uh, in the villas, they're all moderately the same. They all have red roofs, mm -hmm. and it's sort of like the clay roof i think you call it yeah like that yeah. like you're showing yeah. there are all the villa houses all the villa houses are pretty much just identical but in the other lots people have gone yeah you can build whatever you want really uh, there's some a few rules they say you can't build more than nine meters tall and i think you can't build more than you can't use more than 18 percent of your property for structures i think i think that's one rule well, that's huge that will give you yeah, 10,000 yeah. uh, square feet yeah. for a lot like your yeah. size. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think my house is something like 6,000 square feet, so I went, I went kind of crazy. Oh, I didn't realize. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a mansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should show you, I have, a, I'll show you, I have, a, like, this, this is the lower level of my house. It's 100 feet long. Hold on, let me max so, the window, so, uh, one second. While you're okay. doing that, sure. mm -hmm. this is the uh, this is the haiku house. I'll just put it in the light. Actually, if I go like this, you can see the light a little better. It looks like this. Okay, so it's a Japanese farmhouse. So I have this on top. This is the top. This is what you see from the road. But right. on the on the foundation, I have this hundred foot long <laughs> lower level. That's right. half of it there, and the other right. half is over here. Amazing. And then it. Out the wet, out the, on the west side, I, I face the ocean. So there's wow. the ocean out there. There's my backyard. And I'll put a pool in there. And my neighbor has a golf course in his back of his yard. He's got like a giant, he's got a mini putt thing he's building. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> so yeah, he likes golf. So he's got his own mini putt golf course being built. And uh, so, yeah, this is my house. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got a top. second story. Yeah, the second story is up these stairs. I can show you a little bit about that. And I also have a lookout tower, like my office space. You do. Yeah. Let me just show you some of this. This is the top. This is the Japanese part. Beautiful. So I've got a spiral staircase and the kitchen over here. And uh, I've got a Guanacaste wood, got Guanacaste wood ceiling and a loft Beautiful. with a big Beautiful. skylight up there. Uh -huh. Yeah. And maybe I can show it side a little bit. I can show my lookout tower a little bit. There's my lookout tower. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's my office space. Fantastic. Hopefully you and can you, hear me because it's windy. I, I do, I do. And you see the water from there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which way is the ocean now? Uh, it'd be through this way. It'd be uh, west. And now we're yeah. west. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for the tour. How long did it take you to build the house, Greg? 
Uh, it took about a, a year and three months, I think. It, it took long because uh, just a lot of distractions and uh -huh. there was no power at the beginning, so we had to use solar panels and right. generators for everything. Those are windows, looks less windy. Thank you. It was a bit of a labor problem too. One of the managers had left for a different project and uh, oh, there's a fire, a forest fire came through. So that uh, threw a monkey wrench in the plans for about three or four days. We had to go do some firefighting, but uh, all good. But yeah, it took about, um, it took about a year and a bit. A lot of people ask me, maybe you can comment on that. The first thing they always ask me, like, how much does it cost to build? And then he asks you, like, um, and I know a lot of people build in Costa Rica, but they want to hear from a local. You're local now. How much does it cost to build? And is the process more or less straightforward with the permits and the zoning? And they're not going to trick you or anything like that. Uh, I was told that the, the average price is 85 US dollars a square foot. I don't, that's, that's probably old. And yeah. I think I'm an exception. I'm an exception because my, the lower level of my house is, uh, it's mostly empty space. At least it right. was at the beginning. So it's cheaper so, to uh, build just, just the lower space. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And, uh, it's really hard to say. Uh, I don't know. I, what I did was I went to my builder and I asked him, how much would you, tr okay. So I, I, I made a spreadsheet in Google documents and I listed about 40 things okay, you gotta right. get permit you gotta dig you gotta build walls right. you gotta build all the windows i wanted sliding doors and i wanted a fence and i, I asked him list tell me how much all this stuff is going to cost and he put down prices and then i would right. say okay and then i just used excel or a spreadsheet i just added it all up and that's how we calculated how much he was gonna you know charge me to build the house right and, um, and Ooh, I, that's, 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 that's how we calculated the 40 percent so i sent him 40 percent of our estimate right uh, he says he says he lost money building this house and mm -hmm. maybe it's true because uh you know it took him longer and i did some a couple changes along the way called change orders which he didn't really charge me for so <laughs> uh, and he was excited to build the thing and he wanted to finish it so luckily i was really lucky like some people they, they hire a builder and they never see their money again. Some people, they'll, the, the builder will start and then they'll give up and then someone else will have to finish it. But my guy stuck through right to the end and he's happy. And he seems to care about them too. He went to the bank with me and he set up a bank account and he, he hooked me up with a couple of girls, to get me a girlfriend and all that stuff. <laughs> and he took me to some restaurants and uh, he, I met his family and his friends and we were partying sometimes. So I was yeah. lucky. I'm a lucky guy. So, he seemed uh, a good guy. I watched the interview of you and he, and he seemed like a, he seemed, he seemed like a good guy. Yeah, he was yeah. here today. Yeah, he yeah. was here. Today. He's doing little projects for other houses in the area, like a pergola for somebody and a kitchen for someone else. Right. So it seems like a good. Yeah. But um, I mean, I don't want to scare anyone. I mean, obviously, people have various experience. But would you say overall? So there are quite a few houses in Playa Lagarto. People still go there and build there. So obviously, the overall experience of people is positive, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, overall, yeah, I think so. Uh, well, the negative people are probably left. So I don't think uh, I, I, the negative. I don't know any really negative people, but I know that uh, my neighbor. He's got some cracks in his walls that my the builder of my house went over and fixed. Mm. Okay, so. So someone else, someone built my neighbor's house and left, and now he's got cracks that had that my builder had to go fix. Okay. So I don't know. Yeah, what, would you, right. other, uh, what would you say would be like a couple points or tips for someone who wants to come to Playa Lagarto and find a lot and build a house? What would you mm -hmm. tell them? Like if you just met them, like the first few things they they should be uh, aware of. Like me, oh. I want to come down and build a house. Yeah, uh, I think it's a lifestyle thing, really. Like, what do you want to do with your life? Where are you in your life, I think? Right. Are you a party animal? Do you want to relax? And do you want to be surrounded by English people or Spanish people? Right. And how often do you go for food? Or, I mean, for entertainment, that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. And um, do you like 
hot, do you like the beach or do you like the mountains? And do you care about Costa Rica culture or do you want to, you know, is it a, oh yeah, do you want to be here year round or not? That kind of thing. Right. Do you like the summer, I mean the wet season or the dry season? You got to take all that stuff into account. And, and even if you're wrong, even if you pick the wrong place, it's still pretty good here. <laughs> yeah. You no, know, I don't want to yeah. oversell it or anything, but I'm, my builder told me that I was one of the most adapted. But I, he said I did a great job at adapting to the challenges here. Right. The only trouble I had was uh, with customs. I tried to, I tried to bring a bunch of stuff through the airport once, and customs kind of grabbed it and confiscated it, and then they, and then they charged me a whole bunch of taxes on it, and that was very depressing and sad, and yeah. not very. I was not a very happy person at that time. Other than that, I've been okay. I was able to buy a car without too much difficulty. I got a bank account. Okay, I go back. To, I'm working on the immigration thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's taking long, but it's. I don't really care. Uh, my health has been okay. Um, there's bugs. There's scorpions, and there's spiders, and there's little wormy things that walk around. <laughs> <laughs> there's these worms with legs. Right. <laughs> They're called Gisca. Uh, <laughs> Uh -huh. or something like that. Oh, and these are these birds that squeal. There's these doves. They're called pujegos that uh, are kind of popular here. They some people call them suicide birds because they stand. And they just sit in the road until the very last minute they fly off. Right. So um, they 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 squeal all all night long sometimes. And uh, do you get the black monkeys there? Yeah, howler mm -hmm. monkeys. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one woman. Yeah, I got this one woman named Beverly who has. She's got bridges in her trees so that the monkeys can go from tree to tree, and she feeds them. And that kind of thing. So she's got a lot of monkeys, but I, I only saw. I haven't seen very many. I don't really have anything for them, so they don't really. They don't care about me much. Do you go often to? Uh, I guess Tamarindo would be the nearest town, right? Do you There's go there a, often, or other towns? Tamarindo's the nearest big town. Okay, it's. Uh, the, the closest town is called Florida, just like the, the state of Florida, but it's called, I think they say Florida or La Florida. Let me see, let me see That's the, it's the like seven kilometers. Yeah, there's seven kilometers east of here. And I go there for groceries, for milk and bread. Sometimes they're out of stock, though. So <laughs> it seems like you have to go on Wednesdays. They seem to have a good stock on Wednesdays. Right. Yeah, and uh, uh, Marbella. Oh, yeah, Marbella. The town of Legardo by the beach is good for fish. Legardo is a fishing right. town. A right. bunch of fishermen live here. The fishing village, so if you want yeah. fish, yeah, uh, tilapia, um, lobster, some other white fishes. You're not going to find salmon here. You'll find tuna, but you won't find salmon. Right, right, right. There's a tilap there's a tilapia farm, like a fish farm, on the way to San Cruz. You can drive by, you can see pools of fish. Uh, I'm, oh, not, I'm, I'm maybe not a tilapia, but uh, the other ones, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a creek not far from, just like walking distance down the hill. I used to go with my builders and we used to grab shrimp in the river at night. So you walk okay. around, yeah, yeah. You um, need a flashlight and you walk really slowly and you can see them swimming in, in, in the creek. And if you have a pole, uh, you would have a pole with a couple of nails on it and you would just like stab them and that's how you catch them. Okay. So yeah, it's amazing. They're big shrimp too, some of them anyway. So, uh, right now, this the, the creek is a little dry. This probably not. Oh, yeah. thank you. How about the uh, like cost of living? Like, go have a meal at the restaurant or something like that. A lot of people ask. Uh, well, the restaurant built into Legarto, it's cheap. Okay, it's pretty good. Uh, the selection used to be really good, but now it's a little more limited. Uh, let's say, ten bucks at the most will give you like a, a you know. A beer and uh, some burritos and uh, some tacos and stuff. Yeah, ten bucks is usually fine. Uh, there's lots of local restaurants. They're called sodas. They're, uh -huh. they're that's the that's the, t that's the name for family restaurant. It's called a soda. It's not like don't think of pop cans or don't think of Coca Cola or anything. It's called a soda. Uh, but um, there they are other together like uh, rice, beans, some meat. Yeah, rice yeah, and plantain. Yeah, pretty so Yeah, plantains and all that, races and meats and uh, not a whole lot of pork, but a fair bit of chicken and uh, gallo pinto is pretty popular. 
Mm -hmm. I don't really go there too often. I usually, uh, I don't. Know, I usually stick. I, I, my, I stick with the. I don't know. I got some bad habits. I need to break. I usually go. And I go to Subway and I buy five sandwiches and bring them home and stick them in the freezer, or I'll go get a Pizza Hut or something. Right. Or I'll go to Price Mart, which is just like Costco, and I'll right. grab a bunch of groceries in there and put them in a giant freezer, and that way I don't have to go anywhere for a week. So. Um, but uh, I got a girlfriend now that I met. She's local. She takes me to all these great restaurants. She makes the most incredible food for me, and she's teaching me how to how to make it. And so I have avocado with with uh, lemon and tomato in it. And uh, she made this incredible chicken soup with oh, God. like tomato soup with chicken in it, and it had cheese on it and potatoes. And, oh, amazing! Uh -huh. So um, so the, oh yeah, but you know what? <laughs> As if I, I thought, I, I'm going to pay her back. I'm going to take her out for sushi. So we found a sushi restaurant in Nicoya. But, you know, sushi here is not all that great. So <laughs> right. Costa Rica people don't know, you know how to make sushi. So either that, <laughs> either that or the, the ingredients were not very fresh. I mean, this, this, the rice was not very fresh. And, the, yeah, it wasn't all that great. And it was expensive. So sushi here. Maybe in San Jose, probably good. They've got Olive Garden in San Jose. Yeah, and they got Johnny Rockets, and they have they got Pizza Hut everywhere. They got KFC and Burger King and McDonald's and all that stuff. They even have um, what do you call it? Crispy. They got Krispy Kreme donuts in San Jose. Everything. No In and Out Burger though. I wish they had that. They don't. They don't right. have Harvey's. They don't have Harvey's. I think they might have a Wendy's somewhere. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I've had the best ceviche of my life um, in Nicaragua, not too far, southern Nicaragua, just mm -hmm. north of Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the fish market, and like the big guy with the uh, with the uh, apron, you know, chopping up the tunas, and he gave me a little cup. It was fifty or eighty, whatever it was, colones or cordobas. I thought I'm gonna yeah, die. Was so yeah, good. wow, really? Yeah, yeah, phenomenal. My girlfriend, yeah, my girlfriend says Nicaragua has a better coffee than Costa Rica. So, um, well, there you go. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I don't remember, but yeah, it was good. I don't okay. Know. I'm going to wrap it up. I just want to ask you a little bit um, if you can tell us what we see uh, here. This, this, That's uh, the villas. Water. Okay. On the left, uh, at the bottom, in the left, in the center, you've got uh, that one red house all by itself. That's the restaurant. Okay. This and large then in one the middle. Here. This mm -hmm. one. Yeah. This thing? Yeah, that thing. That's the restaurant. Right. Yep. Yeah. And then right, these are the two uh, pools. Uh -huh. yep. So are these owned by people or are these owned by the company that uh, started this project? Uh, okay. I don't know the percentage of who of what's private or not, but I would uh -huh. I'd say probably 70% are private, I guess. Right. Some are empty and some are for sale. Right. I know one has a for sale sign on it. And these are the small, number. right, these are the small villas and then there's individual mm -hmm. villas, houses like yours which really mm -hmm. have like something like this, right? Like this yeah, one yeah. here. So that would yeah. be like independent uh, owner, yeah? Right, yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, oh, so actually, you know what? The guy who built this whole development, he does own maybe two houses, like two normal looking houses in the A right. section that he right. rents yeah. out. Yeah, it's a, it's a giant development. I mean, there's so much. And I think what I like, I mean, obviously I was there and um, what I like, it's very tranquil. It's very quiet. I mean, look at this thing here. Mm -hmm. Super tranquilo. It's kind of a good investment, too, because uh, when they finish the roads, when they finish Highway 60, when they pave it, this is going to be a lot more accessible. Right let now. Me back, let me go back to uh, yeah, 160, good. right? This one? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think the whole coast, uh, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, all getting paved, which is phenomenal. Yeah, it's half paved now, so it's paved yeah. in sections. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, similar yeah. to Highway One in the U.S. You know Highway One in the U.S. where it goes all the way from Seattle down to San Diego. Yes, I do. So yeah, so uh, it's pretty. Yeah, you, know, you know, it's half paved. It's getting there. So these are getting better. Right. Um, people always say, "Oh, the world's kind of falling to pieces and all that." No, it's not. The world's not it's falling to pieces. It's getting fine. better. Right. Yes. Very good. Thank As you, Greg. People, yeah, so people like myself, we come here, we pay taxes, that goes towards roads. 
So, and we get some say. I can't vote in an election or anything right. like that. But when I pay my taxes, I can go and say, can you please pay the roads a little more or a little more often? And, uh, and it, it will. Amazing. And Any, um, yeah, go ahead. And my girlfriend's a notary, so she knows a lot of people. She knows like, all the people in the government, too. So she can, <laughs> she can push a little bit, too. So, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. Any, uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll mention that um, I'm also looking to uh, build in the development, also working with some people who are buying, selling in the development. Any, um, any wise uh, words of advice for anyone that is curious about Playa Lagarto or living in Costa Rica, from obviously from Canada or, or anywhere really? Well, in my case, I jumped in and I got to a point where I didn't want to stop. Uh, I was at a point where I put in too much money, I can't stop, now i got to keep going. Right. And uh, I think um, I was lucky that I found a good builder and I was lucky that I found a nice lot. Um, I think you just need a little bit of luck and some savings and a goal and a vision. You need your vision, okay? Be clear what you tell your builder. Get them excited, or her. There's some female builders here too. Get them excited, and they will build it. And sometimes you gotta you gotta watch them because sometimes they'll they'll make a mistake and they'll go off in a different tangent. Like right. my builder did make two mistakes. He put a wall in the wrong spot, and he had the house. He had this corner, this round corner. He had it in the wrong corner. So so you gotta watch them. And uh, just uh, yeah, come down, come down, look at it. There are places to rent, and there's uh, there's music festivals to go to. There's busy times of the year, and right now during uh, let's see, from November to April, it's kind of the busy season, so it's a little harder to find a rental car and that kind of thing. Right. But um, the rainy season is a little slower. And it's not rainy all day, okay? Yeah, don't be thinking yeah. that don't be thinking you're going to need an umbrella and, <laughs> and you're going to need like giant boots and all that. No, you don't. Uh, only Maybe twice out of the year, it might rain all day long. And even if it right. does, it's, it's not going to be that. It just not comes down stuck. and then it stops. Yeah, yeah. you're not going to get stuck. Maybe October, it might be, uh, you know, the rivers might be high. Yeah. But, uh, it's not that bad. It's actually good. It's actually refreshing. And so, um, yeah, in 35 the degrees. Only, <laughs> the only other advice I would give would be so just uh, be clear what you want to do and have some patience i think yeah like when i when i got to, when i got the when i went to the municipality to get my immigration papers uh, i was able to get done in two days what my builder couldn't get done in three weeks because right. i went there with some stress on my face uh -huh. and some some like, pleading saying please i just need this paperwork to get <laughs> and you know i got the i got the whatsapp phone number of the guy who works there right. and i was clear as to what i needed and these were, people are nice when you when you show that you're learning a little spanish oh yeah learn some spanish i got a book i got a dictionary that has it's half english and half spanish and it's a picture book it's almost like a sesame street book where um, it has all kinds of pictures and stuff i'm good with nouns so um I can't, I can't put a full sentence together sometimes, but you know some, some Spanish, you'll, you'll, it'll, it's very important. My girlfriend tells me it's very important. She knows she knows a lot of people that have been scammed by not knowing Spanish. So I guess it's a fun language. Yeah. 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 It's okay. It's all right. What if you're not um, detailed oriented as Greg? Could you hire someone to be like your construction manager to, to be the liaison between yourself and the builder, especially if you're in Canada? Does that exist? I mean, it does in Canada, obviously. Well, maybe. Um, I know a guy in Edmonton who wants to build a house down the road. Uh, he's given his plans to the builder, and you know, but he's you know, in a hospital. He can't come and see. So he's, he's asked me to be like a liaison to try and make sure that the builder does what he wants or you know, does the right thing. So, and he also wants me to help him buy a car and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I guess there's people around. 
it's hard to trust, I guess. Uh, <laughs> for well, example, yeah, there's some scammers too. Like I bought a motorcycle from a guy and it didn't have a license plate on the back. So I thought, all right, well, it's fine. He'll get it for me. But he couldn't get it for me. Um, and you, uh, if you go driving around in a motorcycle without a license plate, the, the transit police will take the motorcycle away from you. I see. Okay. So um, uh, he promised. He's been promising and promising. I'll get to the plate and get to the plate. But now, it's like yeah. with with the, it's been, we found out that the plates were taken away because somebody, like he loaned it to somebody who was riding without a helmet, and they they gave him a fine, and you know, because they're not paying the fines, they took the plates away. And uh, so I got this. I have a motorcycle now that I can't drive. Right. So, so, uh, so there's there's some kind of scammers and things like that. Um, when you buy a car, you got to make sure you go through. A, you have to go through a lawyer to uh, do transfers and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it seems like you need lawyers for almost everything here. <laughs> for almost everything legal. You know, like, um, get a lawyer or a notary or some a local or someone you trust to do your once to do a once over of your paperwork and that kind of thing and sometimes paper paperwork doesn't really have much weight it's the digital version in the computer systems of the municipality that counts right okay so uh, paperwork can go out of date and expire and all that stuff you said this is a good advice from my notary girlfriend she says don't oh, you got all these books and all that stuff. but it's no i want it. she goes and looks uh, on computer systems and checks oh this is really good like, wow right. you have to have luck and you have to have uh, a good outlook i think but it, yeah 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 that's all, yeah. That's all yeah. advice i can really say what you put in you get out yeah maybe yeah. it's a karma thing i don't know yeah yeah maybe it's okay uh, people it. are pretty um people are pretty open i mean um you can wear whatever you want there's like uh no one's going to hassle you much. There's, there's crime, but it's it would be like a petty crime. Like you would leave. Like one neighbor has, uh, he got some gardening equipment stolen because it left it outside and things like that. I've been pretty lucky. I don't think I've had anything stolen, but uh, right. Uh, Very good. I think some. There are. Oh, uh, uh, someone in Hunkiao had their house broken into at night uh, when they were sleeping, and they tracked their computers the day afterward, and they found that their computers are, are were already in Nicaragua. Oh. So, yeah. So there's crime, but uh, take reasonable precautions, and you, know, you should be okay. Very good. And that's around, and, uh, the police are not super useful. But if they if they capture somebody and uh, if they're unable to do anything about it, they will tell you when the person's getting released. Right. So you can do the person. You can you can you can do street I, justice on them. I, you, I you guess know. that's really yeah. the nature of living in uh, communities like that. People have to come together and, and kind of work together to to make mm -hmm. it happen. And that's I mean I think your example is the best. You came with nothing, you didn't know anything, and there you are. You got a beautiful home, a girlfriend, an excellent developer, you're helping others. It's fantastic. Yeah, we got a WhatsApp group of the whole community, the whole Play Legato thing. So if there's anything suspicious, we put a message on there saying, hey, there's a weird guy walking around, or right. there's cows in my yard, or some, or, or, or there's a water leak, or there's fire, or something like that. So we use this WhatsApp group just for that, just for emergencies. We, we call it... Um, uh, we call it the neighborhood watch group or something like that. We've got one for just blabbering nonsense of you know uh, low quality, mis not low quality, but um, stuff like that. Anybody going to town? I need a ride to the airport. We got a mess. We got a WhatsApp group for that kind of okay. conversations, and we got a WhatsApp group for important stuff like uh, there's a fire happening, or, or uh, I don't feel safe at home right now. Or something like that. So it's pretty good. good. Thank you very, internet, very much, yeah. Greg. Yeah. Yep. Internet access, there's got three options. You've got WiMAX, which has uh, been around a while. I use another one called Infinity, and we have Starlink now. And it's going to, and the, the electric company is going to bring fiber optic to Playa Legarto if 25 people agree to subscribe. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But we only have five people right now that want that. So. 
because of Starlink, we don't really need fiber optic anymore. So. Right. But each house will have to get their own subscription. Yep. Yep. Are the prices yep. the same for Starlink in Costa Rica as they're in Canada? Do you know? No, they're cheaper. They're cheaper. The equipment is cheaper. It's roughly 40% cheaper, I think, mm -hmm. than the U.S. thing. And the, the monthly subscription is cheaper, too. Okay. I, I was on the list for a long time to get it. But when it finally became available, I realized that I, I got a microwave relay thing to Marbella 17. It's fast enough. Oh, it's good enough. <laughs> oh, it's good. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it for here. Amazing. I'll keep it. Uh, and, uh, but if you go to Nicoya, they got fiber optic. Uh, fiber optic from Nicoya, like seven, like seventy-six megabits per second speed up downloading. Like holy cow, that's fast. In Nicoya. Yeah, very good. There's an underground uh, fiber cable that goes to Miami. So Miami is the big hub. So there's a big cable that goes from Miami to Costa Rica. And there's some others too, I guess. Greg, thank you so much. That was uh, really eye-opening, I have to tell you. Like, I didn't know any of the things you spoke of. Yeah. And uh, I feel a lot more comfortable uh, yeah. just by you yeah, sharing for, all this. So for Canadians, yeah, you can get 2% milk, no problem. That's all you can get. You can't get 1% milk. <laughs> I don't think that, I haven't seen one percent milk, but I think you can get it in Price Mart or something. Like that. Right. You can't get Tim Hortons. You can't get Premium Plus crackers, but you can get pretty close. <laughs> no no bagels. That's it. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any bagel stores. Gotta make your own. You got bacon and eggs, and eggs are mostly brown. Right. And you don't put them in the refrigerator. Most people keep right. their eggs outside. Out, out, I don't know. They don't yeah. put them in the fridge. I don't know why. But I do it anyway. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you got tons of bread. You got artisanal bread. You've got white bread, brown bread, grains, whole grain bread. You've got pineapples are cheap. Watermelons are cheap. Sandia is a, like a crazy watermelon that's a little spicier. Yeah. You've got sangria, different from sandia. You've got wines. So you can get uh, avocados. Yeah, they're cheap. Yeah. Oh, and mangoes. Uh, yeah. a certain time of the year. At a certain time of the year, they're like scattered all over the ground. You can't right. go for any girl that's stepping on a mango. And, uh, that's going to come up soon. Mangoes. Are there any fruit the trees on the property, yours or in the area? Yeah, mangoes. There's mangoes and there's berries. Some kind of weird berries. I don't know what kind they are, but uh, they're yellow and birds eat them all the time. Monkeys eat them. Right. I haven't seen bananas too often. Um, coconuts are. Yeah, they look great, but I don't see many. Along the beach, they're, they're everywhere, but I don't really see many around here. Yeah. They like growing in sand. Right. Uh, palm trees, yes. Bamboo trees I see fairly often, but they're messy. They leave a lot of splinters around. Right. So, and there's another uh, bush it's called the limoncilla. Limoncilla. Limoncello, I think it's called. It's like a spiny, it's like a, it's like a hedge. Good for hedges or for live fences, and they have spines and thorns on them, so it's good for like people line their properties with even shallow, very green, and they grow fast and thick. So, very good. Uh, apples, there's no apple trees, it's too hot for that, but right. maybe in the mountains, there might be some apple trees, right? Uh, right, right, that's all good, yeah. beautiful. Thank you very, very much for uh, opening my eyes and not helping everyone. It's fairly really normal to go from, uh, yeah, going from Canada to here has been moderately painless. Yeah. Mostly because I'm surrounded by a bunch of Canadians here and <laughs> yeah. Tamarindo, Tamarindos, everybody's more or less English and you just learn enough Spanish to get by. And you'll learn that the gas stations are a little far away. So you might want to have a spare tank uh, right. gas can because right. they're kind of far. You gotta go 20 kilometers for a gas can. Yeah. And, uh, have patience at the banks, okay? Don't be going in a bank and going up to a teller and expecting your money right away. You have to <laughs> wait in line. You gotta wait in line and you gotta get a security check and you can't wear a hat in a bank. Oh. And <laughs> the, the security guard will be able to make you take your hats off. And uh, what else? Oh, yeah. If a disabled person or a pregnant woman comes in, they get 
put them first in line so you get pushed back every time that happens. So women bring babies into the bank so they get in front of, in front of the line all the time. So yeah. women are respected here much more than in Canada. They get yeah. treatment. Safer. Families are very tight here. Families are bigger here. Yeah. People call each other more. People don't stay in their houses and play Xboxes all day. They go out and mingle and they play in soccer fields. You know, they, they run around and they eat good and they chat and they laugh. So it's a better lifestyle. Kind of, I think. Good. Works. good. I don't good, know good. about better. I don't, I, don't, I don't know about better, but different. Let's just say different. It's different right. in Canada. Right. It's not. Well, I'm adjusted. It didn't take long for me to adjust. Okay, so I, I don't know what else to say, but. Uh, Thank you um, so much. This was a fun interview. I had fun talking. So. Me too. Thank you very much. That was uh, priceless. I'll talk to you soon, Greg. Okay. All right. Ciao. Bye-bye.